What's up? It's Max Patel with the Disciples. <laughs> and what do we have here today? All right, so we have our Danger to Element list that me, Darren, and Raf played for YSS Rio. Um, I, got top, I got top 16, Darren got top 32. How are we going to talk about my score? You came up for the ride. It was a fun turn, a fun day. Well, I had you, a fun weekend. You had a good Wait, time. That's what matters. Don't turn your ankle. I think uh, the deck was really good though. Like, yeah, in general, I think it was a pretty cool choice. I think a bunch of people played like different versions of this deck during the weekend, and I think we got what we wanted from it, and it felt good. So yeah, you guys, any have any, any comments? Let's go through one. Let's go through it. All right. So it's danger tier, right? So we're starting with uh, the dangers. We played seven. So most lists play quite a bit more, I would say, right? People are playing like third Mothman or they play a Bigfoot. We ended up cutting some, uh, just because like you kind of wanted more room for more non-engine. Uh, I wish we could make space for more, to be honest. Because like, I feel like our weakest hands when we don't have a danger in our opening hand. But it's just difficult to find room, like you said. Yeah, and it's also hard to like win the game if you uh, going second if you don't draw a piece of non-engine. Your engine is very good, but I feel you still need like something to like make them not like full full combo you. Uh, so in that point of view, uh, catch got dangerous. Ness is like, of course, very very good. Uh, Mothman is kind of the worst one to draw, I would say. I even prefer drawing to Chinook than drawing Mothman. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, if I always felt safe. So. I don't know. Revealing Mothman is scary. Yeah. yeah. Like so, one game that I lost is just because like I had like Mothman and Chinook and both hit itself. But on average, those cards are super good and they're better than like punks going second or frogs going second. They were so, definitely more often good than bad. Exactly. Nah, no regrets here. Tiers, I mean, 12 tiers, right? It's kind of just yeah, like Max out on your casino hits. Yeah. Like you have to. And the deck said it's best when it hits. So you have to max out, even though uh, Merlin and Havanus aren't necessarily fantastic to draw. See, I really like Merlin. Merlin's like fine. Havanus uh, for me is the worst one. Especially going first, Havanus is awkward. But I think like Merlin, because we're focusing so much on making Splite Elf, yeah. just having access to Merlin means that you can end on like. Uh, you can get to Elf. So you got like guaranteed three mills during their turn. If you can get your elf curious, we kind of get to where we want to be. Well, the LDL hand is just to get like this with any one of these. Yeah, like, she's just insane. I, I think my favorite opener is when you got like Shireen, uh, Rhino Heart, and one. Yeah. And then you just got like you start yeah, Shireen, you pitch. A lot of stuff. And like on. yeah, we're playing Dugaris as well, so Dugaris comes a lot in that hand. It's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to go to the extra deck later. But yeah, you have to play 12 tiers, I don't think there's another option. And then you have kind of the good mills, right? The, the cards that you want to hit off your tiers that are not tiers. Uh, this, we did the though, as No and the Gizmak. And you guys played the Zephyros. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it just felt like an extra danger. And um, it was a level 4, which is quite relevant to me. It was really good well. uh, It was always good for me. level 4 and, and recycling danger is nice. Only only thing that's not good about is being a wing beast, so if you're Ruan and this, you can't make curious. You, 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 know, you can always, like, that's manage why you, you played the Strudo though. instead of it, right? Uh, I played the Strudo. Well, you guys played the Strudo as well, right? Yeah, yeah, but you did it instead of the we, we No, we added... Yeah, yeah, yeah the is the 42nd yeah. card. I played yeah. 41. Right, right, right. Yeah, because the, this is a dragon. Yeah, exactly. This is my thought process, basically. I also think the Strudo is better when you draw it. Like, some, sometimes the Zephyr can be dead in your hand, because you already commit your normal summon, and you don't hit it off a danger. But there's a Strudo if you draw it, it's always an extender. And the way that I was doing it, I always want to make Curious with Garura. So if I if Zephy is my third dark, that's not the Aqua. Because you you're always going to make it with one tier and two other types. If one of them is Zephy, the other one has to be Mud Dragon. So I miss out on a draw. If it's the Strudo, you just got to do it. Gizmek ah. was nice as well. Yeah. We didn't play that Euro, but Gizmek was pretty good. Gizmek was really good. Uh, it's weird matchups, right? Like, yeah, the trash tags. Like, when they just like start with like a right, or something, sometimes you can just like, so, or, or against play, you can just summon L4 and then already have a body to like force them. The banish, yeah. the banish 8 is also really advantageous yeah, yeah. when you want to go up a game with Zeroboros. Yeah. Yeah. It helps you kill Zeroboros, it's also a trigger for Zeroboros in your opponent's turn if you make it an interrupt. Yeah. Uh, the banish 8 doesn't really matter in this deck, I think Snow is like the main thing, I'm like awkward when I banish. But I think if it, it happens, it happens. Yeah, you can resolve like a Desires and a Gizmek pretty safely. So I was confident on that. Yeah, yeah pretty good. I think Zephy was arguably co correct as well. Sometimes I miss another mill. But it's a lot of times the games that you miss, like another good mill, for example. You went through all your effects and you want to move something good from Curious or games you already won. So you don't really necessarily need to play it for that reason. Mm. But yeah. Uh, so that's the monsters. For spells, uh, three tier field spell. And oh, the half army guys is here. Um, good card. Yeah, I don't know what you really say about it. Just it, it's good. Yeah, I, don't <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm gonna do the mine yeah, now. The so this mine, I don't think you played it for Euros, right? No, we didn't play no, mine. No. 
Yeah, I, I wanted to play it. Uh, our logic was that I, you need to win the game one in the tier mirror. Because winning the tier mirror both sides is like insane. Especially like the combo tier mirror, like danger tier, things like that. Dweller one of the games. Yeah, you're like, oh no, Dweller. And both sides, people side into like a pointer, eradicator. They side into some dumb trap card in general. So the best way to win that mirror match if you lost Dyro is winning game one. And the best way to win game one that you don't deserve is drawing Mystic Mine. So it had the utility of the Taha farming. And it comes up into some matchups as well, like it's a good map map, which was super popular in Brazil. I didn't really use my copy, I'll be honest with you. There's one game that I could have searched it, but I chose to go for Perlina and try to break instead, that maybe going for Minus could be better. But in general, I didn't draw it. I did it a couple of times, but never for deck out. Just for a couple of turns to get back to, like, to recover, especially one of the mirrors. It's also uh, fine to be in the gate as well if they play yeah, the pump yeah. version or something. I got Dweller in game one, and I just bought a couple of turns back and then started playing on it. Because I don't think deck out is super safe anymore. Because after the whole big code mystic money stuff, I expect people to have outs in their deck. Well, you say that. Yeah, but like, <laughs> I don't want to go for it if, I, if you can just play under it. Yeah, I mean, Mystic Mind did win the event. I guess it's, it's a completely sure. different concept of Mystic Mind, but... Yeah, yeah. sure did. <laughs> Best deck, baby. Okay, Mystic Mind, burn. Can please ban Mystic Mind. Please. <laughs> if, this, if this tournament wasn't enough, I don't know what to say anymore. And then we did three Super Poly. Oh, Fox Fibbin really good. Bad, yeah, and three Imperm. And Call By, I guess it's like non-engine things. We can just have all the cards that should be banned here. Yeah, that's just true. Here and put Institute here as well. It's just Forbidden Lands. Just yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. <laughs> Institute should be banned. This card should be banned. <laughs> nah, but like, for real, uh, Super Polio is very good. I don't think this card is very good in theory, like conceptually, into anything that's not Sprite. But it, it always works. Like, yeah, going first is usually good. good for yeah. Well. It's, it sounds more mental than what it actually is. Like, a lot of the time I was just using it to dodge Vayner on my kick cards. Yeah. But that was still really good. Mm -hmm. I think mean, uh, the Imperm is a Dark Ruler or something interesting. Uh, something. Yeah, because most people do Dark Ruler for heroes, and we opted to do Imperm instead. Um, my argument for Imperm over Ruler was that against everything that's not Sprite, I'd rather have Imperm. Ruler is, of course, more impactful to Sprite, but I also felt it's in the same vein that to win the Mirror match, you kind of have to win game one, because it's very hard to win both side. And by just playing the cards that are better in the Mirror, uh, gave you a better chance there. As well as being better into the weird decks. Brazil's full of Mathematics, Brazil's full of Rika, like, things like that. And Imperm is better than Dark Pillar against all of those. I was really, really happy that I played this. I hope it worked out for you guys as well. I think looking back, yeah, was when Imperm was good, I'm not sure if Dark Ruler could have just done the same thing in the scenarios that I had, but mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll never know because I never got the play out there too. Because when I did Imperm, then they stopped. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> it's it, 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 it job. <laughs> yeah, it, so it's fine. Yeah. It's also like, people like sometimes don't expect this deck to untrap you. Like, you Imperm them, they're like, they're super greedy, they left, like, one thing has to resolve, you get your Imperm it. Against people that do weird curious lines, you get your Imperm the curious. Uh, I Imperm the Dweller, but I drew it on draw phase, and the guy didn't dwell for his no, then he got Dweller, he got Imperm. It's something to set off um, Griffin as yeah. well, and you can't really set Dark Rule no more. I, I did that a lot, like, just by making Griffin under Elf and setting an Imperm, and uh, as an extra interrupt, and especially when you get Ruler, you just like, it's another type of interrupt. Mm. So that was cool. Call by should be banned. <laughs> Moving on, uh, I guess engine things is like uh, with the desires, which is another reason that I really like the danger is that you guys play this card. This card is insane. Yeah, I'm, I'm always you down to play that card anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm saying like, you, like if you play punks, you probably can't afford to play punks and desires. Yeah, yeah, come on. But, desi but because we only play dangers, uh, desires is very good with them because it, get, it gets more cards, also gets you closer to your post side cards. And it's in general very, very good in this deck. Maybe we should add Thunder Dragons to this deck. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, yo. <laughs> it's I mean, you, you do mill snow and you do mill cards. It's really cool to trade with negates if you wanted to, or you can use your other cards and kind of trade with negates once they're done. You can do this. Like, there's situations where you can activate the field, field spell they totally negate and then you can slap this down for a free draw too if you really wanted to. Or the other way around, depending on what you hand in. A very cool thing about this deck is that everything like kind of pressures your opponent to do something, they can't allow you to do much. So, I mean, for them, activate field spells pressure, because if they don't negate the field spell, then you activate the tier effect. They're forced to get the tier effect. Yeah, exactly. But then the next like tier effect you activate to. is going to pop one. So, field spells trigger. Like, they're always negating the field spell. Like, yeah. If they don't, then, like, that's it. <laughs> and then, like, instant fusion thing is, like, insane. Like, you have to negate this card. This card is, like, a plus three. It's, this card is bonkers. Like, every time I drew this card, I just felt like instant one. Yeah. It felt yeah. so, so good. Especially going second. To noodle. Yep, it's insane. Foolish is something that like isn't as insane in this list as it seems it would be because it's like it's universal enough to do stuff that you need to do. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. It's a reasonable play, yeah, it's not it's not like that much of a power card I'd say, but it's still good. Like I guess to what you need. It's fine. And then we did double Suliac over Metanoise. 
better metal. Metal is shit. Metal is also, also feels just better. Uh, yeah, I, the gate, I think the one matchup that Meta Noise is better than Zodiac is against Sprite. But when you get that far against Sprite, I don't really need to be yeah. Meta Noise. Sprite's a buy anyway, That's in all honesty. Uh, so I, 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 I think, think Zodiac is just I trolled nice. everything it's, it's, Sprite. It is a good matchup. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think like it, it, the difference between winning or losing that matchup is if you start Suliac or if you start Metal Yeah, and Suliac is way better against everything else. Exactly. And it's way, way better to mill or shoot pitch up to one danger. So. Like, milling, hitting that uh, definitely makes your hands a bit better. Yeah. It's just really good. Right, so the other thing with Suliac is that it helps be Dark Ruler, because when the Dark Ruler you, you get to chain Suliac and chain Elf, bringing Merly back. The Merly got negated, but you still get the body on the field from Suliac, which is the main thing. So yeah, so that good. And the last card, uh, the 41st for me, 42nd for the guys, was Anomiscus. The idea is that Anomiscus is a mine out that beats Bitcop because it banishes, it doesn't destroy. It's also decent utility uh, as it gets to, to be good into rivalry, it's, good into, it's very good into Rika. Uh, if you get any. Uh, yeah, this card on a cost, so it triggers the tears. When you end with Dynamiscus, when you do the, full, the whole combo, when you end with Dynamiscus and you get nibbed at the end of the combo, you still have Dynamiscus and a tear in hand, so you gotta banish, the, the, the tear is gonna trigger, it's gonna make Kit Cuddles, maybe trigger the Field Spell, if not, like, make it Stapelia, and it's, like, versatile. The effect you summon back from the grave actually came up for me twice this weekend, because they activated the trap, I summoned this back, and then you can make Alpha of it, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, a generally good card. And that's the main deck. Uh, extra deck. Uh, oh, I'm sure Raph's tokens. Shout out to Raph. Oh, for this, shout out to uh, Ruben. Oh yeah, then I missed this was Ruben's idea. Super, super good for me. <laughs> Great cinematography. <laughs> uh, extra deck. Uh, Zeroboros. That uh, card was sick. This card was so good. Uh, it was so good. I it's so unreasonable. I single-handedly won me a lot of my games. He's just big. I summoned this, the guy asked how much attack I'm like, a you, have, you have 20 banished. I, just, I have like 30. I just look at my really big stack track? of banished off desires or snow and gives me. I just go, die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I made Dugaris and double this once. So I just like kill shot it for like 20k over something. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, then the Griffin that we make just said the. Uh, uh, the Anomiscus. Or, or like, if you don't have the Anomiscus, you can still just set like a different card. So it's still versatile and it's a good interrupt because of the floodgate effect. Uh, Griff uh, Curious gets you to hit any danger, any danger, any tier name that you're missing or is no. Um, just generally very good. It's very easy to make in this deck because of the dangers. Garur is a wing beast, my dragon's a worm. Um, and it's also, it floats into nib, so if you end with this and they are forced to nib you to get rid of what you have, you get to add something back and keep going. Uh, Unicorn is probably the like, least standard one that we played, right? Uh, I liked it to be honest. I felt like a lot of the time it's a struggle to get them to use their back row, and that really forces it. And it also it's just a f it's free when you let it into that off dark as well, so it feels like a link two rather than a link three. Exactly. Especially when you can make a like, dark into this and then into the Boros. Mm. A lot of times I just did this to like force the last thing and then make Boros and kill. Yeah, it's really cool. So I really, really like your yeah, Uh The elf. Uh, for to revive the Merly, also makes things unable to protect. You make this a lot, and Dark is super super good uh, in this deck because it allows you a lot of times you make Dugaris going second, and then you can use like Dugaris and Mer and like a tier to make this take their sprite. And now you have two different types for Curious, while Dugaris and an Aqua wouldn't be two materials. Dark and whatever it takes is two materials, so it's very very cool. I also crashed this to, like add a monster, so let's put game up. And then we main Dweller and Dugaris for Exceeds instead of maining Redoer. Did you guys miss Redoer? No. no, actually I didn't. I completely forgot I like it was a thing to be I like, I like Dugaris as well. Yeah. I also went more for the blind just because of, like the rest of the field deals pretty well with play. And then the game one against tier is so important, so if you are playing against tier, I just want that blind. Yeah, I agree. I personally never summoned Dugaris, but maybe I might have been playing the deck differently. No. Or no. wrong. <laughs> I felt like I did Dugaris the whole day. Yeah, like every hand I felt I was just doing this. Yeah, me too. I really like adding Suliac out of Kit Kalos and then pitching it and drawing two, pitching one. That searches a Meru and playing from there, just a lot of card advantage. And it draws like uh, pointers both sides. Yeah, yeah. And for Fusion, it's basically standard, right? Uh, Color the Heart, Kit Kalos, one Sepelia, one Garura, one Madragon. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, I missed this. We played IP as well. This was kind of the last spot. It was between IP and Redoer. IP was very, very good for me. When you don't get to end on Curious, then you get to just end on Elf plus IP, which is super good. And then, yeah, 
This is an engine card and not a super poly target. It's sick. You just make this. Yeah. Like generally like... It's free cards. Every, every, sometimes like it's better to make the, the second kit colors because it's just like a draw and it's a different type. Yeah. This card's so cool. I think a lot of the skill from this deck is being able to uh, loop your, your fusions well. Like make sure you don't run out of them. And you can kind of like endless loop because of these three because they, they all put them, each other back. So you can like make sure that you never run out of fusions. Yeah. The only one you can't loop back is this one. But Kid Carlos brings it back, so pretty much... Exactly, it's kind of the same thing, unless he gets banned. himself. <laughs> yeah, and then for the side deck, uh, did this kind of last minute. I don't know how great it was, but... It was quite good for me. Um, I, I really like Nibiru going forward. I think that should be like a, a staple in the side deck. Every time whenever I consider a side deck, that'll be like the, the first three cards I put in. Yeah, so it's like, really solid. It catches it, out people. People don't was, play around it. Yeah, it's just kind of like the combo things, and we did evenly as well for tier. We're doing uh, evenly and nib against tier, which I think is kind of cool. A ruler is mainly for sprites. Evenly was fighting against the rubbish. Been, yeah, so this was our last minute thing. We're between playing evenly and draw. We ended up on evenly because we were afraid of back row deck, especially because South American event and all that. I didn't resolve a single evenly the whole weekend. I did. I did, but um, like I also lost twice against like the heavy combo decks. Like one with rides, rep rows, and one was like Mirrors Tri Brigade, which like did a massive combo. I was like, yeah, draw would have been better for my matchups. But then that can go the way around. You can also play against double outlays, and I'm really, I'm really happy as you play evenly. So uh, I don't know. But even in hindsight, was, like draw is better for me. Even yeah. it was cool for me when I played yeah. against like the rubbish and non meta stuff. But I think I'd value something more for like if I played a danger teamer or something like yeah. draw a lock or something like that. That being said, don't play draw. I like resolving my dangers. Um, and I just turn a reboot for like five back row cards. And then the trigger pointer was the going, going first card we chose. I had to fight for this one. And I sadly did. Not play <laughs> I liked it. Like, I think Zulu Angel was better for me if I played it. And my logic is that like the going first card that I play, I kind of wanted to be able to deal with both mine and evenly. So anti spell only deals with mine, and floodgates like some limit still get mauled by mine and evenly. I just decided to take the L evenly and I played some of them. Oh, yeah, and and then I did, I really did take the L evenly. <laughs> That's why I was doing top three. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Lost your scene. Yeah. 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 My, <laughs> my top 16 match, I did draw two of those and they were kind of dead. I'm like, oh my god, if there was some limit, it'd be sick. But I got rebooted anyway. Uh, He's in point. Nice save. <laughs> and then this. Yep. And yeah, that was basically. Shout out to the disciples. Oh yeah, our YouTube channel. Uh, thank you guys for recording and being here. I uh, really, really enjoyed the weekend. I really enjoyed back with you guys and playing the same list. It always feels nice when you can catch play the same list with other people. Yeah. yeah, it was very fun. Shout out to Keish, shout out to everyone back home, shout out to everybody who came to Brazil. Big fun, thank you. Shout out to Luxury Gaming. Awkward one to one night. But yeah, that's it, and see you guys next time.